everybody, it's Miss Flurry from Yellowbird Studio and I'm here to teach you how to make a springtime banner. Miss Pamela is here to help me, so she is going to be recording the video and, we're, and away we go. We're ready to go. All right, friends. What we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you how to make your own springtime banner to decorate your house or your room or to give it away as a gift to someone. We are going to be creating this banner by drawing with yarn. I wanted to show you, there is one that I did a while ago. And I want you to see how instead of using markers or paint, I'm actually using thread or yarn to create the lines that outline the, the picture. So what I want you to do is to watch this video all the way through to understand where we're going with this project. And when you're ready, start the video again and follow along with me. Here are the materials that you are going to have in your kit. And then I'm also gonna tell you what materials you're gonna to have to get from your house. So in your kit, you're gonna have a roll of burlap that has a piece of wood called a dowel attached. Once you get it in your house, you can unwrap it and see what it looks like. You will also have a bag and inside the bag, you're going to have a bunch of different colors of yarn, one piece of twine, that we're going to use to tie with. And in your bag somewhere will be a little needle. It's a plastic needle. Okay, so those are the things that you will have. Also, you will have some beads. These beads you can use for this project, and if you don't want to use them for this project, you can use them for the um, springtime habitat that you made with Miss Pamela. So I'm gonna set these aside right now. The things that you're going to have to get from your house, somewhere in your house, are going to be a pair of scissors, a light colored marker like pink or yellow and a dark colored marker it doesn't have to be a sharpie um, black or blue um, or brown just a, a dark colored marker and also a piece of blank paper that's at least as big as the the uh, the burlap so a standard sheet of paper should be enough it should be about as big as the burlap that you're going to be using now there are going to be times where i say use a hot glue gun but I just want to know, you to know that hot glue guns are hot and that's why they call them hot glue guns and I want you to ask your parents for permission before you use it or if you're not too sure that you can use one, please have them do those steps for you. There are going to be times during the video that I'm going to stop and let you practice or work on a piece um, on your own. So I'm going to say you can stop the video at this time. And if you're not sure how to do that on your computer, please get your parents to show you how to stop the video. Okay, so here we go. Before we actually start the sewing, I do want to go over a couple things with you so that your banner will look great. The first thing is, I'm gonna switch back over to this one. Um, we are gonna be using something called burlap. Now burlap is what people used to use to bag up vegetables, nuts, and other kinds of food to ship out in big bags. But crafters make really cool sewing projects like this one. And the thing with burlap that I want you to keep in mind is it frays. Now fray means it comes apart when you pull the little strings like this, okay? So I want you, when you're doing this project, to resist the temptation to pull all these little strings out because if you do, you won't have very much burlap left to, to sew and to use. Um, I have added some hot glue to the corners um, to keep it from fraying, but eventually you may want to add a little bit more hot glue with permission um, to keep it from fraying, which is what I did with this project here. Now, Ms. Flory, I have a question. Mm -hmm. If they don't have a hot glue gun at home, could they paint just plain Elmer's glue along the edge? They sure could. You could just do some glue, so it'll dry clear, and that'll keep this from fraying because that is going to be the enemy of your project is when it all starts coming apart. And it won't if you either use the hot glue or maybe paint some Elmer's glue when it's all done. Okay. The um, second thing I want you to keep in mind is we're going to be doing a simple tulip banner. That's gonna be the one that I'm going to use as my demonstration. You are welcome to copy me and I'm gonna show you how to draw an easy tulip. But if you wanna do something a little bit more complex, um, I want you to make sure that you have enough yarn to make your design. And the way that I make sure that I have enough yarn is you're going to get a piece of yarn that's already cut. You're gonna fold it in half because that's the way we're going to sew is our needle's gonna be down here 
when it's going to be folded in half. So with your yarn folded in half, I want you to go around where you think you want to sew. For example, I think I want this tulip to be red. I want to make sure that I have enough red. So I want to see if it can go around the tulip. It can, so I know I have enough. Now if I had wanted to make the whole thing red, I obviously wouldn't have enough to cover the whole thing with red. So if you want to do a more complicated project, say something like this house, make sure that you measure it out before you start with the color that you want to use to make sure that you have enough. I have given you pretty much every color in the rainbow. Um, so you can just use your imagination, you can make a rainbow, you can do whatever you want. But like I said, I'm gonna do this simple tulip. Um, now it's time for you to um, follow along with me. If you want to do the tulip, you can go ahead and follow along with me to draw the tulip, but if you would like to stop the video, this is a good time to stop, and you can draw out a more complicated design. Okay, so if you want to draw the tulip with me, here is how we're going to draw the tulip. You get yourself a piece of paper and your dark marker. Now a tulip, the basic shape for a tulip, um, is really just a U with a W. But first we need some stems. The stem is what holds the flower up. So I'm just gonna draw a line, and then I'm gonna draw a U, and then I'm gonna draw a W inside of the U. And then maybe I want another tulip here. I draw a U, and then another W. And if I want even one more tulip, I can draw one up high. You can make as many tulips as you want. And then a W inside. Now for the leaves, you can just do, just kind of like out and back, and another leaf that's out and back. You can make skinny, strappy leaves like that. If you wanna make a leaf that's a little bit bigger, you can make it a little bit bigger. It's up to you how you want your design. But that's really how we're going to be doing our tulip. Once you have your tulip drawn out or whatever you have, if you've stopped the video to draw your own design, go ahead and get your paper out and you're going to unwrap your burlap from this roll and you're going to lay it down just like this. And you should be able to see, now mine has already been drawn, you should be able to see your drawing underneath that you're going to be tracing. Okay, so my original one that I used for this one was right here. And I just take another marker that's a light colored marker because we don't want the darkness of the marker to show up on our final project. So yellow or pink are really good colors. And you're going to just simply trace over the black lines. Now I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again. And then when you're all done, you just take the paper away and then you have your pattern of how you're going to um, sew, okay? so. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to thread the needle and tie a knot. So I'm gonna put my burlap aside and I'm going to get a piece of thread. Now I decided I'm going to do a red tulip, so I'm going to get a red piece of yarn. And just if you've never sewn before, your needle has something called an eye. Now the eye is where we're going to push our yarn through that eye and I'm going to demonstrate it, and if you need to take some time to do it, um, if you're not getting it on your first try, just stop the video here until you get it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm just going to push my red yarn through, and I'm going to pull it out. Okay, and so now I have threaded my needle, and I have it ready to go for the next step. Now we're going to make sure that your ends are even, like this, and we're going to do something called a two friends knot. Now those of you who've been to the studio, you may remember me or Miss Pamela talking about the two friends knot, but what we do is we imagine that our two pieces of yarn, the two ends, are two friends, and they do everything together. So we're going to imagine that the two friends are standing together, and now the two friends are gonna to stick together and they're gonna walk in a circle and they're gonna walk in a circle until they make a loop. Now, once you've made the loop, you pick up the loop and you tuck your two friends under and you push them out through the loop. So you have this kind of a knot and you pull it until you have a knot. 
like that. Now, if you need to practice this, stop the video here. You can take a piece of string from the string that we gave you, then maybe a color you didn't want, or if you have extra string at home, go ahead and practice tying the two friends knot. Now, my two friends knot is way down here. I would suggest if you get really good at it, make your two friends knot a little, you, when you get really good at it, you can do it like me and I just wrap it around my finger and then I pass it through. So hopefully your knot is a little bit more towards the end than so far down. But if you're just learning how, that's okay. All right, so now that your needle is threaded, we're going to start the sewing. Let me get my burlap back out. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick a corner of your of your drawing. Now I'm going to pick maybe this corner and you always start underneath. So there is a pretty side and a not so pretty side. So you're going to start underneath and you're going to find a corner to start in and you're going to help go under and then pull up with your needle until your thread stops. Now if it's if you don't pull it up all the way and you, you might wind up with extra string underneath which is not good. So always pull until your thread stops. Once your thread has stopped you have two choices. You can either do short little stitches kind of like I did with this house. These are short little stitches or you can do long stitches like these windows were made. So that's something that you would plan on now and the trick is to try to keep it the same all the way as you're sewing. So I'm going to do the same thing I did over here and I'm just going to do kind of medium to short, kind of medium stitches. So you're going to kind of think, okay, that's long enough. Find a place on that line, poke it through, and pull it all the way out. Now the the the, the secret to making it look good is to own to just skip maybe two little threads of burlap. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to Go ahead and skip a lot of threads of burlap and show you the, how it doesn't make a nice solid line, which is what you want. So I'm showing you what not to do, and then I'll show you what, how to, what to do instead. So this is what not to do. Don't skip this whole big space because look what happens. You're, draw, you're missing a, a gap in your, in your drawing, where here you've just got a tiny little thing. Now if you find that you've made a mistake or you've skipped too many, the neat thing about burlap is you can always turn it over, pull your needle back through, and back it out of that little hole. And you can start over and fix your problem that you just made. So I'm just gonna skip a couple right there. And then I'm gonna go pull my thread so it's nice and straight. And then I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna go a little ways and go down. And then I'm gonna skip a couple right here. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm just gonna come up after about two, maybe two or three, and then I'm gonna come up. And then I'm gonna go again, down a little ways. And then up, and you can turn your, your sewing as you're going along. It helps with um, being comfortable while you're sewing. I'm going to do this a little bit fast. If you're going too fast, like I said, you can always go back, look at this part again. Go down. I always hold it with one hand instead of using the table. And once you get really good at sewing, you can just use your other hand to kind of help you go along. Okay, so you're going to skip one or two on the line and go up. Now, so do you see my tulip is starting to take form? I'm going to skip one and come up and then go down. Now for these part, this part here, the top of the tulip, um, what I did is I did just some really simple, just one stitch. So instead of going up and down a whole bunch, what I did was I'm just going to come back up here at the top and I'm going to go down a whole piece and then I'm gonna go up. Now here I'm going to um, skip a couple. Now I'm gonna do something with the beads. I didn't do it here, but if you want to add beads at any point, anywhere, what you will do is you will take your bead and you will string it on to your needle. Push it all the way down. 
So I want actually maybe, here, let me, I think I have an idea. This is where you can get really creative and unique. So I think I'm going to stitch all the way up and then I'm going to add a bead right here at the top just for fun. I'm going to do one little, little stitch right here, add my bead, and then I'm going to go right next to it. I'm going to stitch down again. This is probably for a more advanced sewer, but that's okay. This is all just fun and experimenting. And then I'm going to come back up again somewhere. And then I'm going to go down again. And then I'm going to go back up. I'm going to come close. And then finish. So now we have a really cool little, maybe a little tulip with a little bead on top. So now we are ready to finish. So you're going to end, your needle should be, when you're, when you're done, your needle should be underneath. And you're going to flip over your burlap. And this is where I see some people make a mistake. When they cut their thread, always cut your thread close to the needle. Don't cut it here because you won't be able to tie your knot. So we're going to cut it here, close to the needle. Now I'm going to show you the knot that we're going to use and if you need to stop the video to do this knot, please do. But it's basically what I call a shoe tie knot. Now if you remember your, when you're tying your shoe, you cross it, you make a cross like this, like a bunny with two ears, and then you loop one underneath and you pull it out and you're going to do two of those. So you're going to cross it, loop it underneath, and pull it and there your sewing is secure on your tulip. Then you will go and finish the rest of it with whatever color you want. You have so much thread, you can also do cool designs along the edges. If you wanna maybe take um, more colors. Oh, goodness, my, knot, my thread is all knotted up for my sample for you. So if you wanted to, you could sew a pretty border all the way around but remember don't sew too close to the edge because if you do it might just kind of fall off so sort of like this one here I kind of tried to stay a little bit away from the edge just a tiny bit so that I wouldn't have that problem now if you wanted to fill the tulip in another thing that you can do is if you want to make this a solid yellow kind of like I did the Sun on this right here just kind of go up and down and fill the space in however you want um, it's really not that hard and it just takes a little bit of practice. You can do just fill in a very long um, stitches or you can do a bunch of small stitches that are very close together and you just fill that in with different colors. So really it's up to you how you want it to look and that's another reason why I gave you a lot of extra thread so that you can experiment because practice will always make you better at whatever you do. Um, now, if you don't use the beads on your banner, when you're all done and your, your whole design is stitched, you can go ahead and take the twine. Now the twine is for you, I gave you a little extra long twine for you to be able to tie it easily. You can simply take some of these beads and you can string them onto your twine to make a pretty little um, embellishment on your twine hanger, um, like this. Just stick them on. Then once you have as many beads as you want, you can do another double shoe tie knot, but this time you don't have two ends. You just simply tie and like that. Okay, and then tie it again. Now what I do here at the studio is I add a little bit of hot glue right here so it doesn't keep slipping on and off. So I just add a little glue here. So if you wanna do that, ask your parents permission or if, um, if you're doing it by yourself, just tell your parent that you're gonna be handling the hot glue gun so that they know. Um, so anyway, thank you for working with me on this project today. I had fun designing it and creating it and I hope you did too. If you are proud of your work and you wanna show it off, please share it on our Facebook 
page or on Instagram. It's Yellowbird Studio Tampa. Um, we would love to see it or you can even email it to us because we really miss you guys. We wish you were here doing these projects with us, but I guess this is the second best thing. Can't wait to see you when we're doing our exciting painting project um, on the painting day. So take care and I will see you soon.